authorities of Magadan propose to use school children to clear snow in the city. A monthly norm has fallen there in a few days. Do parents agree to that? The mayor did not specify. Nobody even bothered to ask them. Forced labor, militarization and ideological processing. All of this is a return to the practices of the Soviet past that are being actively introduced into the Russian educational system. A huge number of people, of course, don't like what's going on in school with their children. But the Russian authorities have made it so that there are almost no ways to individually defend against propaganda, against dragging children into any kind of support for the war. No prosecutor's office, no labor inspectorate, no court will ever find it illegal for a school to do that. Often, parents of school children find out about various propaganda activities after they have taken place, and in fact, they have no influence on how their children are educated at school. There are very few opportunities not only for society and parent groups to influence what is going on at school, but also to find out about what is happening at school in general. Some propaganda lessons parents also find out about it after the fact. And there are plenty of reasons for ideological education sessions in the country. According to the publication in Important Stories, Russian students celebrate more army holidays than professional military personnel. Since the beginning of the school year, schools have celebrated at least 13 commemorative dates, such as the Day of the Russian Guard, the Day of the Units for Countering Extremism and the Day of the Tank Man. In December, school children celebrated six dates at once. The month began with the Day of the Unknown Soldier and the Day of Heroes of the Motherland and continued with the honoring of the strategic missile forces, military counterintelligence and state security agencies. During the holiday, school children had to take part in organized meetings with participants in military conflicts or members of the security forces, excursions to thematic museums, shooting competitions, laying flowers or remembrance vigils from the publication in Important Stories. In addition to war, so-called traditional values are also in the trends of the Russian propaganda. However, they are sometimes understood in a particular way. For example, in 17 Russian regions, school children have been banned from wearing trousers. The administration of these educational institutions explained it is necessary for discipline and good academic performance. How trousers affect discipline and academic performance remains a secret. Parents in Irkutsk region complain that girls have to get to school at minus 30 degrees in skirts and tights, which has caused health problems for some of them. Trousers are not the only type of clothing prohibited. Warm clothes, jumpers, cardigans, hoodies are often not allowed. Doctors sharply criticize these orders. Because of the peculiarities of the structure of the female body, the risk of getting sick due to hypothermia is five times higher in girls. Stupidity and nostalgia for Soviet times. This is how Evgeny Yamburg, honored teacher of Russia, comments of this situation. From a publication in the Telegram channel, we can explain. Putin wants to introduce systematic military propaganda in kindergartens as well. He approved the idea of the Russian educational minister to have the military movement Eaglets of Russia, which was originally created for junior school children, operate in preschool institutions. According to him, more than two and a half million kids have already joined the Eaglets, and there are dozens of such organizations in the country. The budget allocates huge amounts of taxpayers' money to maintain them. Reported by Anastasia Tarnavska, Victoria Smirnova, UATV News.